Hello and welcome to the mouth of the River Tyne on a fairly windy day, it's safe to say, yes. <laughs> um, I, I'm here because I simply could not think of a better spot to announce the winner of this Saga of Eric the Viking book giveaway contest. You may recall a couple of weeks ago I offered to give away a copy of this book to someone who could inspire me and tell me why they wanted to join Eric on his adventures. And you guys did not disappoint. We received lots of entries by email, poetry and prose in modern and also in that sort of a medieval-ish kind of style. And also a couple of cool comments on the video as well. And uh, I'm here to, to announce the winner because this river is a spectacular spot uh, to do so. It's a majestic river, it's the river on which Archeosoup Towers sits, it's seen millennia of human activity. Uh, most recently, or in recent centuries, lots of industry, shipbuilding at Wall's End for example. Uh, crucially, it's a river up which the Vikings have sailed. And it's a river that, that, that opens up onto the North Sea and Scandinavia beyond. Indeed, the Tyne, the word itself, is a pre-Roman name for the river. We think it may be a, a Celtic god or goddess, but we're not quite sure. But unless the word has survived. So, a wonderful spot, if slightly cold and windy. <laughs> so, we received around 50 entries for this competition, and uh, over the past few days, Mrs. Soup and I have been whittling them down until eventually we had three that I'm going to share with you today. Uh, the first honourable mention actually comes from uh, someone who unfortunately does not require the book. They want the book, but they don't require it from me. Uh, all will become clear. <laughs> While travelling on the tubes of you one cold October's night, I came upon a sprightly traveller, wild of hair and beard, who bade me pause and hear his tale. Good sir, said he, I am a scholar of ancient lore, and I have discovered a book of wondrous tales, which has brought me joy beyond description. Here he reached into his robe, and withdrew a magnificent tome, its covers festooned with intricate scrollwork and images of great longships. Good sir, he continued, so great is the joy this book has brought, I cannot contain it on my own. I propose, therefore, to pass the book on to you, so that, so that it, the happiness it brings may be spread far and wide. Alas, said I, I cannot accept your generous offer. Can you not? he asked. <laughs> Taken aback, might I inquire why? Less than a week passed, I entered into an agreement with a scrivener from the kingdom of eBay to purchase a copy of this very book, and I am oath bound fulfill the bargain. Perhaps, said I, the next traveller you meet can receive this great boon you offer. Sadly, I cannot. Hereupon I took my leave of the man, and as I rode away, he called out, Good sir! <laughs> Before we part, may I have the honour of knowing your name? I turned in my saddle and replied, I am <laughs> the Mudbrooker called the Accursed. And he goes on to say, No, really, I just ordered one on eBay and here you are giving, giving the damn things away for nothing. <laughs> Both Mrs. Soup and I loved the style of this particular entry and also the, 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 um, the, the irony yeah, uh, inherent in having just ordered the book. But good taste, sir. Good taste and well worth a mention. Our second honourable mention of the video was an email entry and goes as follows. Why on earth would I go on an adventure? Wrong question. Where on earth would I go on an adventure? That's better. Sometimes I tell myself that I was born too late to have adventures exploring the earth and too soon to have adventures exploring the vastness of space. I have to say, I, I, I often feel that myself. A world where everything seems already charted. A world where there's seemingly no new mountain to climb. No new sea to sail across. No un unknown land beyond the border of our cosy homes to gaze upon. Feels like a world where any would-be adventurer would live a life starved for his greatest yearning. But fear not. As different as the adventurers of today are to the adventurers of old, I feel that I, or any other curious person, haven't changed all that much in the essentials. Why would I like to go on an adventure? Why would I like to travel to some remote place or hike in an area I've never been to? 
there's always some personal goal to reach. Whether it's a landmark I decided to finally see with my own two eyes and make the extra effort to get there, or just the experience in and of itself. Sometimes the experience, the journey itself, is the adventure that counts the most, not the temporary conclusion or to an adventure when the destination is reached. Or indeed taking a selfie at that place. Lots of people go to a place just to have a photo of themselves, slightly obscuring it. I, I seem to uh, seem to have noticed recently. It's quite irritating. So yes, it's a temporary satisfaction. The journey is often the more worthy part. I've had moments in my life when I was in a new environment I hadn't visited before, be it in the wilderness of, or, or the countryside, or even in some interesting town or city. Just wandering around, anticipating what might be around the next corner, is a thrill that we can fully experience once, only once in our lives. I don't need to go on foot all the way from Siberia to Canada across the frozen Arctic. Look that up. It really happened in 1998, he says. <laughs> or to go on a long and demanding sea voyage to experience adventure. Adventure is not a matter of distance or of how exotic a locale around you might appear. Adventure is a thing of attitudes, of the imagination, and of a person's ability to keep their eyes open to the little details surrounding us in our daily lives. I can't count the number of times when I walked a seemingly, seemingly familiar path and noticed something that had previously escaped my attention. For months, even years, whenever it happened, my new discovery felt every bit as fresh as making discoveries along the way in an environment completely new to me. Sincerely, a regular viewer of Archaeology Soup. I quite like this entry. I like the way that, 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 that you turned everything on its head. You said, no, I, I, I'm not going to answer your question immediately. The, bit, the, the more important question is, where are we going, not why are we going? But I also like that you did come back to answering the question as well. <laughs> and, and also focusing in on the inward journey. That's actually, in many ways, what sagas are about. It's about what happens to the hero inside, where they start emotionally, personally, philosophically, and where they end up at the end of the journey. A very good and stimulating entry, I feel, via email, so thank you for that. Our third honourable mention goes to a, a comment on the video itself, uh, and it goes as follows. A Herberno Norse lady travelled for many days before settling in the fair Amounderness. She toiled and toiled until she met her husband Dark. Their little house grew upon the arrival of their shield maiden, beautiful and fair. Tell me the old tale, she asked her mother, but alas, her mother could not. It had been so long since she had heard the words of the scold she had forgotten. A prayer she sent to the ancient ones, and a wordsmith arrived. Tell me, he said, why are you worthy of such a gift? The woman replied, I am not, but my daughter is. It is for she, not me. So please give me the words and I will pass them on to her. But not only her, but to the next Viking camp I will tell these words with which he said dot dot dot. Now I think the ellipsis is, a, is an offer, uh, an enticement for us to add to the, uh, to the poem there. But we both liked that. Both Mrs. Soup and I liked the idea of passing these tales on to the next generation. In many ways, just as my dad did for me, uh, I like the idea of, of this little shield maiden hearing these stories for the first time. And so you might have guessed, but big softy as I am, I'm going to be giving away two copies of the book. Uh, the first one is going to go to, to the Hiberno Norse lady who, uh, who's going to be passing these tales on to the next generation. I, I'm simply absolutely in love with that idea. As I say, I, I treasured these tales as a child and I'm sure she will too. And the second copy is going to go to our philosopher, talking about the inward journey as much as the, the outward uh, destination. 
uh, you, you, you inspired both Mrs Soup and I and you are going to get a copy of this book as well, uh, courtesy of both of us. Uh, unfortunately, our first honourable mention of the, of, the, of the video simply doesn't need this book, but hopefully you're going to enjoy it a lot. <laughs> An irony of ironies that I was, I was giving away a copy just after you'd already ordered one on eBay. Nonetheless, thank you everyone for entering this competition. It's been a pleasure reading your entries, especially those which, which had that style of, a, of, a, of ancient uh, poetry and prose. And uh, I'm going to get out of here because it's getting quite cold. As ever guys, until next time, do take care. Bye bye.